Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad, and welcome back to the wonderful world or the wonderful universe of space engineers. This video is concerned with demonstrating how to use the Nanobot build and repair mod, and also how to install and use scripts. The Nanobot mod introduces some automated welding and dismantling features in the form of tiny little nanobots. Imagine you've just placed the basic blocks for a huge base and now need to walk around individually welding the blocks, getting more steel plates, welding more blocks. Or imagine you've just shot down a huge enemy ship and want to grind it for spare parts. Or imagine you've loaded up a huge blueprint of a ship from the workshop and you can't get in to weld all of the components fully. And what about those unwelded blocks underneath your refinery or your assembler that you can't get to anymore? Nanobots will sort all of that out for you. We're going to use load game and I've chosen this is the game. I'm going to edit the settings and then go into mods. And from here, I'm going to browse the workshop for nanobot build and repair. And there it is. So I want to subscribe to that by ticking this little box. Now mine's already ticked. And we'll go back and find that in our list of mods. There it is, build and repair system. And we'll just add that across to our game. We'll say, okay, okay again, and then load up the game. And here we are in our tutorial world. So we're gonna go to the G menu and going to look for build and repair system. Now it's not called in the G menu, it's not called nanobot build and repair. It's just called build and repair system. And I'm gonna drag that into number seven. In Alt F10, I have got the creative mode tools on, so I don't have to weld these things as I'm putting them down, just to save some time for this tutorial. So if we have a look at the build and repair system, we'll flip it up the right way. You can see it has the ports on two sides. Now those ports need to be connected to your network so that it can get resources. But for simplicity, because I want to have that facing the right way, I'm going to put down a conveyor just here so I can put the nanobots on top and have them facing the right way. Now, this isn't essential, but I do prefer this way around. So if I rotate it, now the left is pointing to what I want to be the left and the right to the right. And obviously down is the right way as well. So let's go in to see how we set it up. If I go into the control panel here, now, first of all, it starts by being off. And I'll leave it off for the moment, just in case it starts grinding or welding something that I don't want it to. I'll leave the rest of these as they are. Now, the first thing we need to look at here is the mode. Now, what walk mode means is that it will only physically interact with things that are attached to the same grid as the actual build and repair system. So things that are, if we come out like this, like this rover, the build and repair system won't touch that because it is not physically connected to this grid. So I want to change that from walk mode to fly mode. So now in fly mode, the little nanites or nanobots can then access other things that aren't attached to the grid. For example, stuff outside. Now, if you decide that you want to remove an object from the world and you'd like the nanobots to grind it down for you, you can paint it a certain color and it will concentrate only on things painted in that color. So I quite like to use the colors. I'm going to use control and click on there to set this 100. That's already on 100 and change that one to 100. Nice and easy to remember. So the nanobots will weld anything that is that color. Now that happens to be quite a nasty lime green. It's not a color that I'm typically going to use in the game. And it's a nice easy one to remember. 100, 100, 100. Underneath that in the janitor functions, we've got the option to grind enemy blocks. Now we want to do that most of the time. You can switch that off if perhaps you captured an enemy ship and you wanted to convert it to your own or modify it and use it as your own ship. You might want to turn that off. The next one, janitor grinds not owned blocks. So if we have a, a friend who's in your faction, perhaps join you in their ship, we can stop the nanites from grinding down their ship. So I'm going to turn that off because I don't want it to grind blocks that I don't own. And also we can specify neutral blocks to be ground or not as well. 
Now again, I want that off because I don't want it to grind any neutral blocks. Now you can also specify a grind priority. Now this is quite useful. So again, an enemy ship approaches and the nanites start grinding it for you, which is really useful. So we can say that we wanted to grind particular things before other things. Auto repair system is a good one for it to grind. So if perhaps the enemy ship has its own build and repair system, then yours will attack its build and repair to stop the enemy ship from self repairing. We can also get the build and repair to collect things. Now that's the floating objects is the known. So if there are any uh, ingots lying around or ore, uh, so if you've blown up a ship and the, it drops materials, you can get build and repair to pick those up for you. Now you might not want it to pick up stone or you might not want it to pick up gravel. So you can remove those if you want to. So for example, gravel, if we don't want build and repair to pick that up, we can disable that and the same thing with perhaps stone. Now this one here, the show area, will give you a, a sort of a graphical representation of the area that the build and repair can work in. Now it automatically sets to the maximum size, but you may want to move that area to out in front of your base if you've built a base into a hillside, which is very common on a PvE and PvP server, then you might want to set your build and repair to concentrate on the area in front of the base as opposed to the areas inside of the mountain. Now you can do that by changing these settings here. And the last thing down here is the sound volume. Now, for whatever reason, the author of the mod has decided that the build and repair system needs to have an annoying ticking sound when it's idle. Now, I suppose it's useful so you know that it's finished doing what it's doing, but it is very loud and it travels a long way. So I'll typically drop that down to 15 or 20% volume. Again, I use control and click to type in the number there. Okay, let's go back to the top and we'll switch the block on so let's come out of there and we'll test it out i'm just going to place down a normal block here and we'll wait and see what happens and hopefully the nanobots will find the materials to, to weld this up and there they go all right now we don't want these blocks anymore so let's paint them the the correct color that we specified in the menu and see if the nanobots will get rid of them so I'm going to go into P, and I think that actually is the color there. It is, yeah. Oh, well, even if, it's, let's say we, we've got this color here, and we want to change that to the grind color, I'm going to type in there 100, and here 100, and here 100. Now, here's a little trick. If you don't hit enter at this point, it won't fully accept that color. There, I need to hit enter, and now it's actually programmed in that color. Okay, and I'm going to paint that block with the middle mouse wheel. And that one. And let's just see. Hopefully, the nanobots will grind those down. It might take a moment. Yeah, there it goes. And it's done. So the build and repair system will access the rest of your inventory, but if you don't have something manufactured, let's say it needs a thousand steel plates and you only have 400, it'll use all 400, then it'll get stuck because it can't tell the assembler to produce more steel plates unless we use a script. So in order to use a script, we need a programmable block. So I'm going to go into the G menu and find the programmable. And there it is. OK, let's place this block. I'm going to put it, uh, yes, put it just here. Get it the right way around. There we go. And let's access the terminal in the programmable block now and see how we add this script. So we're going to F. We're in the programmable block. And down here you can see custom data and edit. So if I go into edit, this is the script for the programmable block. Now this isn't the script that we're interested in, but this is the sort of form that it takes. Now it does look a little bit frightening, but really there's very little you have to actually do with these. I don't want this script. I want to load up a script that I've saved from the workshop. And incidentally, I'll put a link to this script in the description because it's not that easy to find by browsing the workshop for some reason. I don't know why that is, but nevertheless, that's the way it is. So if I go to browse scripts and I'm going to look down the list for, there it is, nanobot build and repair. Now from here, I want to copy that to the editor. And again, it looks pretty scary, but you really don't have to do anything with this. 
One thing I would say though is that you need to make a note of that there where it says build and repair group one and where the capital letters are and assembler group one with the capital letters. And for ease, I'm just going to copy that with control and C. So once we've loaded up the script into the editor, we can say check code. Okay. And then we just say okay. Now this is the script running and it's telling us we already have a fatal error. Now the reason for that is because we haven't created our groups for the assembler and the build and repair. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. While we're still in the terminal, we can look for the build and repair system and we're going to create a group for it, which is the name that I took from the script just a, a moment ago. So I'm going to use control V to paste that down. Control V and save that. So I'm creating a group, even though there's just the one thing. So I've highlighted that and I've put in this name for the group and the one's important and we need to save that. Now I'm going to go back to the programmable block and I'm going to say edit to have a look at the code because I want to copy this section here. Now it might be worth you going back and watching this video over because this does does seem a little confusing. So I'm copying that there exactly and I've done that and then now I'm copying this one exactly. So I'm using control C. I'm going to OK that. Now I'm going to find the assembler. There it is. And I want to create a group for that called assembler group one. And click save. Okay, so just to explain what's happened there, the Nanobot build and repair system will work by itself like that as long as you have the components that you need for it to be able to build what you've put down. If the components aren't available and you rather that the build and repair made the things for you, you need to use the script. Now to use a script, you need a programmable block. And inside of the programmable block to access scripts, you go into edit, browse for the scripts, find the script that you want, copy it to the editor, you then say check code, OK and OK. Now the next thing that we've just done, but I'm just repeating just for clarity, we go back into the script, we go into edit, highlight build and repair Group one, do control C, okay. Search for build and repair system and select it. Create a group, use control V to paste that name and then click save. Then we go back to the programmable block, edit the code again, highlight assembler group one, control C, okay. Now find our assembler, click on it block group and do control V to paste it down and save and that's it so now the build and repair will talk to our assembler and get it to manufacture the parts that it needs to do its job now let's say we don't want this anymore I want to paint it the magic color which is this one here now it could be obviously any color you want but I specified 100 100 100 for ease so I'm going to pull up a building block and remember if I do a single click with the wheel it only paints that one thing but if I do shift and control it paints the whole thing and now you can see the little nanobots are coming out and grinding it down for us. Well we've just had a look at the large grid nanobot build and repair system. There is a small grid version which is useful for attaching to something like this ship. Now this means that we can fly out to a site where there is something that we want to salvage and get the nanobots to grind it down for us. It also means that if this ship takes any damage while we're flying around, the nanobots can repair it, which is also very useful. So let's place one of those on here now. Now it's quite big and it has a large connector on either side. 
So typically, you might want to install that between your connector and your ship. But I'm just going to put it on the back of this ship for ease. So that's number seven. I'm going to plonk it right there. Now let's go into the ship and have a look at the settings for that. In the control panel, go to build and repair. Now in white is the, the ship that we're in at the minute. The orange one is the base build and repair system. And you can see here that it has, I think it actually has all exactly the same settings. So we can set the grind color. Let's do that. To match the other one. And we can also tell it not to grind blocks that aren't owned by us, but to grind enemy blocks and not to grind neutral blocks. And here also, if we're doing a salvage mission, we might want to specify certain things that we want the parts from. Perhaps we're not bothered about getting so many metal plates from uh, armor blocks or components to make doors, but maybe we want more components from things like um, a power block, so that might be reactor components or components from a gun and so on. So if we want to prioritize the power block, for example, we can select that and say priority up to put it up the list. So the build and repair system on this ship will concentrate on grinding down power blocks first. Now with this small grid version attached to a ship that you're flying around in, it's more useful to set the area that it works in uh, than it is so much with your base one. So let's have a look at doing that now. I'm going to switch off the blocks. We'll get outside. Now I just changed my view. And I'm going to go into the K menu and find build and repair. And let's find right at the bottom show area. And let's come out and have a look at that. Now you can see the area that the ship build and repair works in. Now it's quite a large area, but it's concentrated all the way around the back of the ship as well. Now, what I would typically want to do is to move this area to the front of the ship. So I'm looking at the vessel or the station that I want the build and repair to grind down. So let's change where it's sitting. I'll go back into the K menu and build and repair find the show area and because of the orientation I've got this I'm going to need to use the vertical offset to push it forwards because I've effectively got the build and repair on its side. Right, that will probably do. Let's come out and have a look. And there now so all of the build and repair efforts will be concentrated towards the front of the ship but I've still got the rest of the ship inside so it can repair itself. So that's it. It's slowly but surely picking away. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video and I hope you found it useful. And uh, please hit a like if you if you did. And uh, obviously subscribe if you want to see other similar sorts of videos to this. I've been Tom and Brad and I'll see you again soon in another Space Engineers video or perhaps a video about something else. See you later. Bye bye.